Fab. Yeah, we're so excited to be launching this project today, which is going to sort of fundamentally change the state of our knowledge about nature. Um, and the beauty of this technology, where we're basically analysing the sort of fingerprints that animals leave behind in the environment, is that this is something, you know, the sampling is so easy that anybody can do it. So this is a tool that we can put in people's hands all over the world. And all they have to do is, as is being shown here, pull up water in a syringe, screw the syringe onto this filter disc and push the water through it. And the DNA and the material gets stuck inside the filter um, and that's just sent to the lab for analysis. You're talking about a fundamental change here. What are you going to do with all this data? Yeah, so it's a really good point. We're, um, the, it's really key right now that we have data that is available for research and for conservation at the sorts of scales that will allow us to make decisions about how to invest in the natural world to address the biodiversity crisis. Um, so as part of this program will be to make all of the data that we get from these samples freely available for the research and, and conservation communities. So collecting this data in these rivers and wetlands, how would you say that that actually helps to combat uh, the extinction crisis? So we're in a really interesting position at the moment where we understand we're in this extinction crisis. You know, we're in the middle of a mass extinction. We still know remarkably little about just the basics of what species live where. So we're talking about these sort of very high biodiversity areas. Actually, even in the UK, there was a report a few years ago that said we only actually know quantitative trends for 5% of the species we have. And so if we're genuinely going to try and make a difference and sort of take actions that will change the, will bend the curve on biodiversity loss, we have to know where we're starting from so that we can measure the changes that are happening and we know whether the actions that we're taking are actually making a difference or not. Um, and we can sort of take a targeted approach um, to be able to have the, the greatest impact that we can with the, the investment that's going to be mobilised. Dr. Bruce, you obviously seem very excited about this new project. And you yourself, you've travelled to the Amazon several times on research trips. Tell us, what's it like there? What kind of signs have you seen when it comes to the decline in biodiversity? Oh, my gosh. Um, what's it like there? It, it's incredible. I mean, I, it, it's very difficult to explain what it's like being surrounded by just such an incredibly diverse, vibrant environment. Um, I myself actually really struggle to see wildlife. I'm terrible at it, I miss everything. So for me, it's amazing being able to see all of these species sort of rolling off our DNA sequencer when I spent so many months in the field trying to find them. And it just sort of highlights the power of this technology that people can spend months and months of, you know, real experts looking for species in these areas um, and failing to find them. And, you know, for example, we've been working with Fauna and Flora International in West Africa, and they needed to confirm whether or not there were pygmy hippos in an area of rainforest. So they used the eDNA, which confirmed exactly where the pygmy hippos were. Uh, and alongside it gave them data on about 150 other species, including many endangered ones. Um, so just, you know, it's real eyes into these environments that are incredibly difficult to actually do conventional surveys in, just because basic things like, you know, the thickness of the forest makes it very, very difficult to see things.